Can I get some Croutons soy milk? Oh, no. No, 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 no. How come no? <laughs> Just no. no. 30 days. Right. This is my favorite. Bye-bye. Maybe I'll say goodbye to donuts. <laughs> I say goodbye to all of it. You could say that goodbye to aisles 3 through 12. <laughs> We've got 30 days. Okay. This was a life plan. You know, I wouldn't freak out over the one biscuit. But if she's giving me 30 days to change herself into a size 0, I need to freak out over the biscuits. <laughs> On these minuscule rations, Louise must complete a commando-style workout every day. Barry sets a regime of a three-mile run plus an hour of weights. I hate exercising. I hate it. I just find it so boring. Now, can you sink down more? Because it's ass. <laughs> Chest up. Straight spine. There you go. Sink down. Lower more! Below my hand. Good. Yes! Good. Fine. Ten seconds. Nine. Lower. Eight. Seven. Six. Good. Five. Stay with it. Four. Three, two, one. Yes. Big difference. Mm -hmm. but you know when it's a good time to keep your abs in? All the time. On the way up, push the butt forward. Yeah, and I'm killing your sex life for a good four days. Oh, great. <laughs> Possibly five. It's really easy for a guy to, or with no family to say, you know, of course you can. You can get up and come in here at five o'clock in the morning. You know, where does your day end and start? I mean, I'm not a bionic woman. But Louise is going to have to dig deep. The next day, she's up at the crack of dawn to do her workout. Then, it's straight off to present the clothes show. The diet is already proving harder than Louise imagined. I do feel like I'm about to drop, I have to say. I feel physically exhausted. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm close to raiding a minibar somewhere. Backstage, Louise is beginning to appreciate the reality behind the glamour of the catwalk. I used to be chased around my Paris agency with a tennis Really? Every time that I walked in. And it was, that was quite tough because I was so young at the time that it really no, no, got to me. I only worked, I spent three months there, I worked once, and I was constantly told, you're too fat. They wanted to see bones. Really? They wanted, they wanted, I used to hear horror stories about the bookers coming in, and this is at my agency, bookers coming into the fridge of where you're staying and taking out all of the food that they really didn't agree with that you should be eating. I know two girls that have gone completely anorexic and really painfully anorexic. It's not then being size 8, size 6, they've gone under that. Where yeah. It's just, they're ill. Yeah. Really ill. For years, the fashion industry promoted emaciated as aspirational. But recently, things have got very out of hand. Last year, two catwalk models, Luisa Ramos and Anna Carolina Reston, died as a result of eating disorders. Despite these tragedies, Skinny is still being actively promoted as beautiful. The clothes the designers make are the size you have to be. So if you don't fit the clothes, they can't book you. It doesn't matter if they like you or not. Yeah. It's them who start off with it. And when I went to Paris, most of the clothes were tiny. Like I remember someone telling me I had fat arms, which I couldn't believe. <laughs> I was like, if anything, my arms. The model's shocking stories have deeply unsettled Louise. How can the fashion industry justify its hunger for size zero? Ex-supermodel agent Jonathan Pang, who's represented the likes of Jodie Kidd and Naomi Campbell, is a vocal defender of the super slim catwalk look. Would you as an agent ever say you had a lovely, slim, gorgeous girl and you set her on a casting and you felt that she was very, very slim and naturally right where she should be mm. and they phoned you up and said, we really like her but she's not skinny enough. Would Let's you say then... a girl, a really top girl could make, say, a quarter of a million pounds doing one collections right in, in London, Paris, in Milan and New York. 
So that's quite a lot of money. And if she has to lose an inch or two on her hips to get that money and to be successful and to say, okay, I've got to diet if I want to make this work, I don't see a problem with that. Some designers are aware of the controversial girls that they are using in their collection, but it's about Connor Minches. They want to make sure that they get the front cover of a newspaper or it you know, needs to be covered. Designers want to make an impact on the outside with their outfit and their creation coming down a catwalk. And the sad reality is... An outfit is, just tends to look better on somebody that is taller and more willowy rather than shorter and wider. And if Louise is ever going to become willowy herself, she's got to find time to do more exercise. I've got to go to the gym. I only did an hour this morning, so I'm, I haven't quite finished what I've been set. And it's just mad. I just can't believe that I've got to go to the gym at 9.30. It's kind of a bit soul-destroying. You know, you think, God, how far do I have to go to, to lose a few pounds? And as the diet progresses into its fourth day, Louise is settling into a mind-numbing routine. It's worse as, at the end of the day, to be really honest, when it's about seven, eight o'clock, and I feel really hungry by then. And I've just been going to bed really early. It's either that or eat. All of a sudden, having to have a bit of plain salad, I almost, almost doesn't do anything for me at all, so I, I struggle. So the, the best thing I eat throughout the whole day is this. That single egg omelette has to fuel her through a full-on Barry workout. So I'm halfway through my three miles and the really... Just, I don't know, I can't put it stupid, but the most ridiculous thing is afterwards, I'm meant to do Barry's workout video. I feel like he's watching me. It's all very heavy, it's all very, really intense. So trying to do reps of like 100 after a three mile run. She struggles on, trying to cope with family life. I'm on my way to pick Charlie up. It means so much to me because anyone that's a working mum, you grab on to, you know, the hours that you get together. Um, and I think that is most probably one of my biggest worries about following this diet, that I become a bit narky and just short-tempered with him because he doesn't know what's going on. There's no let-up, including even more exercise when Charlie wants to go out for a walk. Lou will cope with whatever's thrown at her, but I think she's struggling. You know, being with her and being so close to her, I think that she's found it very hard, especially looking after a, a, um, a child, a two-year-old that's very active, and a, you know, a husband and a family, uh, and all the things it has to do, going to the gym all the time, I think that's been hard for her especially in all hours of the day, to work out. Um, and on an empty stomach most of the time. On her return, Louise finds that the size zero dress has finally arrived from LA. It's tiny. It's got something like a 23-inch waist, which is just incredible, because it's, it's the kind of sizing that I do think of as a young girl. Um, and I, I did have a little try on, and I'm not like a million miles away, but I can't get the sip done up. Um, and it is extremely tight. So if I wore it as it is at the moment, I'd have to go out with it undone. <laughs> but Louise is definitely losing weight. In the first week, she's lost six pounds and now weighs seven stone four. Her BMI is 18.5. 18 is seen as dangerously underweight. Her bust has gone down to a 32C, her waist has shrunk by just over an inch, and her dress size is now between a 6 and an 8. Whenever I'm down. Louise has a meeting with her agent, who is becoming increasingly worried about her. But eating in restaurants has turned from a pleasure into a pain. I'm going to be a real nightmare. <laughs> always, always a nightmare. Um, I'm following a really ridiculous diet, so I wondered, on the blackboard there was fish and vegetables, could I just get... The cod, yeah. Yeah, the cod with steamed vegetables. I feel like I've got nothing to look forward to. I know that sounds really mad, but it's just boring. I'm just, I'm just 
Lovely, thank you. Thank you very much. And the fish there. Lovely. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. I feel guilty in this in front of you. I know. Say shit. I suppose you're conscious of everything that you're. Every yeah. last thing that you're eating, everything that passes your lips.